Hi, everybody. This is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology. And uh, I'm the roving international foreign correspondent for Impact Magazine. And I am delighted to have a very, very special guest with me today. I happen to be in Rome, Italy, and he is in Budapest, Romania. And Romania has been in the news, if you're not aware, because they have taken a stand against government corruption. And I think this is going to have, a, well, first of all, it's going to have a huge impact in Romania because they've, they've done this amazing thing. But I think, and I'm hoping that it will have a huge impact on the rest of Europe, where the other European countries and their citizens will take a look at their governments and say, you know what, we need to take a stand against corruption here. And fingers crossed that it actually crosses the pond and gets into Canada, my home country, and the United States and starts clean, cleaning up the massive corruption that is uh, running throughout their governments in that area as well. One of the benefits that uh, I have as an instructor from Udemy, as an online course creator, is the fact that I meet lots of great students and, and Udemy and, and Amazon and the other places where my courses are, all wonderful and wonderful people. But I think the nicest people are my fellow instructors. And it's an amazing community. And I've met a lot of people through this experience with Udemy in particular. And one of my favorites happens to reside in Budapest, Romania. And when I heard about all the things that were happening, I was really worried, right? Because, oh, my God, there's this big protest. And is it dangerous? And what's going on? And so I contacted him and uh, got an entirely different story than what I had gleaned from the odd headline that I had seen. So I asked him if he would come on with me and talk a little bit about what was going on in Romania now and how it's impacting Romania and hopefully the rest of the world. So uh, he's a wonderful instructor. He's got great courses. Soren, Constantine, welcome to the show. Welcome, guys. Very nice to be here with you. Well, thank you very much for the invitation, Scott. Uh, let me introduce to you a little bit uh, how, the things, uh, how the things started here, you know, because it's very interesting. Uh, I live in Bucharest, Romania. You know, it's a wonderful city. And uh, basically, uh, last Tuesday, you know, I was uh, I was back at home uh, with uh, a couple of days before before that Tuesday. There was a big march here in the city in Bucharest. You know, because uh, the new government that was uh, proposed one month ago. You know, because we had elections in December here in Romania. And uh, we we have uh, a new power party at the okay, and uh, we have a new government, and they started like one month ago. And uh, their uh, the, the plan they did that they proposed for government was very very good in their uh, in their campaign, you know. But the thing is that when they started, you know, they started to take some very different measures than they said they will in their campaign, you know, in their mm -hmm. electoral campaign. And uh, basically, uh, last Sunday it was a big march in the in the capital in Bucharest, in uh, which people, you know, uh, basically marched against uh, some some new laws that they wanted to to take and proposed, you know. And everything went went okay. It was a peaceful march, but uh, they they didn't take the street in consideration, you know. It I mean, it meant nothing for them. And after that, two days later, Tuesday night, I was at home, you know, I was watching a movie, it was like 10 o'clock, and I was switching the, the TV channel, you know, and I got on the news, and on the news, they uh, they said that, uh, you know, uh, the, a new government meeting ended, and basically, they, uh, they gave out a law with urgency, I don't know exactly how is that uh, called in or is named in English, but the government has the power to to give out some uh, emergency laws or something like that. You know that pass the parliament, pass everything. They don't need to be approved by the parliament or president or anything. They go and uh, they are available basically right away in the in the justice. You know they have that power. And uh, at nine o'clock, they've ended the their uh, their government meeting and they gave out this very contro uh, controversial law. Where they changed the, where they change, they basically changed the law, and they support corrupt people, you know, and uh, the whole idea was this: uh, they did this at nine o'clock in the evening, you know, basically when everybody goes home, sleeps, you know, and everything, so that people won't know, and spontaneously, you know, a lot of people 
I mean, uh, myself and with uh, other friends of mine and a lot of people, you know, spontaneously, we created a march. We went in front of the, gar- the government, were like uh, 15,000 people, you know, which uh, basically told the government, okay, you should retreat this uh, emergency law because this is not something normal. You know, you are supporting corrupt people. But uh, obviously, uh, it didn't affect them too much because they were the corrupt people who were affected by the law, you know? And uh, the fact is that there are some things, you know, some measures stipulated in that law that probably Romania will adopt in time. And this is something that is very important for people to understand, you know, from all across the law, from all, from all across the world, because there are, there are countries that uh, already use this law. Okay. Uh, but uh, the whole idea is the way they did it, you know, because it was clearly that they did they did that law for them, you know, to escape prison, to escape all of their trials. Because uh, I think like seventy five percent of politicians here uh, are uh, I don't know are follow are uh, in a trial or something like that, you know. That's right. That's one of the things that I had read in one of the articles before we went on the yeah. air was the fact that even the person that's supposed to be the prime minister is under investigation or exactly. in, in trial for trial. corruption. Yeah. And a lot of the, my understanding of the law was if you were like corrupt and it was under like 20,000 pounds or something, it would be just like, it's okay, right? In other words, it was exactly. okay to be corrupt as long as exactly. it was this much, not that much. Yeah, and, this was one of the, this was one of the things that was, uh, you know, very, uh, very discussed, very debated because they didn't give any explanation for this. You know, I mean, they were questioned. If you give people explanation, okay, which was the emergency? Why did you give that law at, I don't know, 22 o'clock in the evening? Why did you put it uh, as an emergency law? Why didn't you put it as a project law in the parliament to be approved and so on, right? So all of these things, uh, indicated very clearly that they were hiding something or that they were, uh, you know, they did it for, for them to escape, you know, their trials, prison and other stuff like that, you know. And that's why people uh, got out in the street because 27 years after we had a revolution here, you know, and everything changed for us and we went from uh, communism to democracy, you know, these things still happen and this is very sad, you know. And I know that corruption is something that probably appears in absolutely every country in the world at a certain level, you know. I think there's no country in the world where there's absolutely no corruption. I think that's yeah. probably it's almost impossible. But it depends on the level, you know. Here the, in Romania, the level is still very, very high. I mean, it's like a, a circle from in which you, you get, and I, I don't think there's any solution to get out, you know. And through this law, they basically made things much, much worse, you know. And actually, the prime minister, the guy who should be the uh, who should have been the prime minister that you are, uh, you have uh, read uh, about in uh, in the newspapers. Uh, he basically he's the leader of the of the party who is in power now, who is in charge, you know. Yes. And he cannot be a prime minister because uh, because he has these trials, and he was one of the people who was uh, uh, you know who had benefits if this law went through. He basically would uh, get rid of his trials, and after that, he could be named prime minister. You know, but this is not something so that, that you would be do. an emergency from the government's perspective. It's exactly. like, well, we want this person to. He wants to be prime minister. He exactly. has a lot of power in the organization, but he can't because of the law. Because the law doesn't so, doesn't let him. So we're just going to sneak this law through, and exactly. of course, it would make everything worse for. In terms of and, corruption, uh, generally speaking. Basically, no, no politician uh, went to the television, you know, in the last week here in Romania because most of them had benefits from this law, even if they were in the opposition. You know, nobody got on TV or in front of people, you know, to say this law, it's not good, you know, because uh, everybody would, all of them would be affected in a positive way, you know, by this law because most of them ha- already have trials, you know, and uh, we have actually, we have a special... Uh, like a special division here, uh, a special police division or a secret service division that hand, handles corruption, you know. And uh, basically, uh, through this law also, they would take some of the power of that uh, of that institution, you know. And this is not okay. something normal. 
Yeah, this right. is not something normal. And that's why people started to get out in the street because they wanted the law to be retreated. The law would have entered in, um, uh, had become available with all its measures and everything in 10 days since last Tuesday. So uh, basically that would have meant, uh, I think, this Friday. But on Sunday, they had another government meeting and they ended the law, you know, they retreat the law because a lot of people went to the streets. I mean, on Sunday, there were like, uh, fifth, I mean, I don't know, like 500,000 people or something like that. That's Half a million. Heard, yes, 500,000 people took to the streets. So the government yes. had no choice but to listen to them. Yeah. And now people are still going to the streets because they made a, a terrible mistake. It was a huge tactical mistake from them. And obviously people don't trust them anymore right now, you mm -hmm. know, and they want to, they want them to resign the prime minister and the whole government, you know, because they made the terrible mistake. They should see the consequences right now. You know, I mean, they lost the confidence of the people. Yeah, exactly. They lost the confidence of the people and uh, they have to go. I mean, there's no other solution. The problem is that in the last couple of days, you know, because of the weather and everything and because the law was retreated, uh, less and less people are going out in the street, you know. Right. The and feeling uh, is, well, we won this battle. Do we really want to have another election? I guess is, yeah. is the question, right? Yeah. And uh, because uh, basically one year ago, you know, it was something very similar uh, it was a tragedy here in Romania, and there were uh, there were a series of events that uh, uh, finalized with uh, with the le with uh, the prime minister resigning and its whole cabinet, all the ministers and everything. And there was uh, ten months we have uh, we had a government which was uh, I don't know how to name it. Uh, we would like call it a caretaker government. They're just there a to caretaker, exactly a caretaker government. Exactly, a caretaker government, and uh, now it's the same case, you know, if these guys are leaving, we will have to go for that again, but... Uh, I guess, and the other say, question is, is who do you elect, right? Because yeah, you, exactly. I'm assuming it's another, a different group that you threw out, now these people got in, you throw them out, like, is there anybody kind of left? Actually, the same group, <laughs> it's the same oh, group. Same group. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's the funny part, you know, it's the same group, and... Uh, I, basically, they have no opposition at the moment. I mean, mm. the opposition, the part, the other parties that are in Romania at the moment are very divided, and they have uh, almost no power at all. You no, know? they have no opposition. That's the problem. That's actually right. the big problem. Because if they had opposition, probably things would have uh, stand a little bit different. You know? Yeah. In Canada, we have the we have the official opposition. And their their job is to oppose everything, whether they agree with it or not, kind of thing. Because they, it's to give the opposite opinion, right? So that it gets heard. And uh, it it's interesting because I remember many years ago, my dad was talking politics with me, and one of the things that he said, our terms are about four years, four to five years. And he said, you know, every eight to nine years we should throw, we need to throw out the government and replace it with a new party. And, and he was very much in favor of one party, but he wanted to throw everybody out. And he said, the, the reason is, is the first four years, the new government is all excited. They've got all these policies and all these things that they run on, all these things that they want to implement. And they're kind of naive, right? Like they just want to change the world. And after, in the second term, they've, they've accomplished some, they've had some wins, they've had some losses, and, but they've started to learn the system, which is how to be corrupt, right? How right? to be, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, it's like they, someone comes and says, you know, here's $10,000, vote for this, or we want to do that. And they, they get influenced, and then the corruption starts to set in. So he says, you know, at the end of the eighth year, they're becoming very corrupt, whether they actually are or not, they're in that process. It's a natural process because, you know, the developer who wants to put a high rise on that spot and nobody else wants it goes to the politician and says, I'll give you some money to be reelected if you vote for this. And exactly. it happens yeah. all the time. So he says, you know, by the time the eighth year is there, you got to like get them out and get a new group of, you know, excited, bushy-tailed, naive people who want to change the world as opposed to who want to make some money off on the side in. And it's really difficult to do in a situation like you described where there is no opposition 
no opposition. Yeah, I mean, uh, doing that. if you if you go back, maybe I don't know, like four, five, six years ago, they had an opposition. You know, that's what that's what's the interesting part. But after after that, those parties divided, and they were they were divided in smaller parties. Everybody went, you know, and this one remained the same. And they they basically dominate the political life here because they are elected by. Uh, Romania has a lot of old people, you know, people who are actually getting pension from the state right now. Like, I think there are over 4 million people like this or even even more. And all these people are electing them, you know, are voting for them. For this they don't party. want change. They don't want change. And this party, you know, all the time promises to them, we give you more money, you know, we give you more. But they don't explain to them that uh, that those money have to came from taxes from other from other places, you know. And they are not interested because they are old. They think, oh, we have more money and that's it. You know, they are not interested in more than that. They don't think about the future too much, you know. And uh, having a majority, they all the time get elected. That's the problem. Okay, so I want to ask you a little bit about what it was like being in the march, being in the pro the protest. So, uh, you know, you said it was spontaneous. You just saw what was going on, a bunch exactly. of your friends, and you just went. Uh, <clears throat> so there, it wasn't like an organized thing. No, um, but, no. in the you know, first night it wasn't. It yeah. Was it... Um, did you feel like there was a lot of danger that the crowd was getting out of control that the police were being brutal or you know what was your experience being in the protest uh actually it was uh, that that was the whole idea you know to be a very peaceful protest because uh, i know that people a lot of people and from all over the world have the impression that you know protests or march marches have to be something uh, dangerous or, or where there's a lot of violence or stuff like that but for example uh, that would have been the case maybe in the first uh, evening, let's say, because it was spontaneous or something like that. But even then, it didn't happen, you know. It was a very peaceful march. People just went uh, went in front of the government spontaneously, uh, two hours after they, they gave out the law, you know, and they protested. And we sit there, like, for three or four hours, and then everybody went home, you know. Then in the second day, because I, I saw... Uh, in the international televisions and newspapers and everything, uh, some violent scenes, you know, from the protest. In the second day of the protest, last Wednesday, what happened? Near the protest, near the march, you know, in front of the government, uh, I think there were like 80,000 people or something like that in front of the government, but near that location, there was a soccer match. Hmm a soccer match you know and in europe soccer matches are very <laughs> are fine matches as well you know and some of the some of the soccer fans came from the from the football from the soccer match you know came and uh, they had like a, a small altercation with the police but it had absolutely nothing to do with the march itself you know those were different people uh, people who were at the march left the square you know uh, got home and uh, remained only the police with the hooligans you know with the with the soccer fans from the match so it had absolutely nothing to do with the march so in the march there's nothing dangerous then in the next following days it was absolutely peaceful people just came to the to the march actually there were some guys uh, who came to the march you know with uh, with singing instruments and they started to sing and everything else i mean it turned out right. like to be in a in a carnival or something like that you know so it was it was very peaceful. It's it's nothing dangerous in a march, you know. And people have to understand that this is one of the basic rights that you have in a democracy to go out and to say the things that uh, that you do not agree into a march. You know, if you do not agree something, it's your right to go out in the street and say it. I mean, marches are organized. Are things that are organized, you know. And uh, they're, they aren't dangerous. It's a right that you have if you feel that something is is going out is going in the in the wrong direction. You can go out and and protest and march. You know. And uh, for example, on Saturday uh, during the day, like uh, I think it's it was one o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, 7,000 people or 8,000 people got in front of the government and a lot of them were with uh, small children, you know? Mm. They came with, with their children, you know? And it was like a children's march or something like that, you know? <laughs> so you can figure out it's it's nothing dangerous about that, you know? I mean, 
It was very, very peaceful. And it was very yeah. nice because people got together, you know, and went out for a, for a common cause, you know. Nice. Uh, so what has been the your experience with neighboring countries? How do they feel about what's been going on in Romania? Well, uh, first of all, there are uh, a lot of uh, Romanians who are in other countries, like uh, who reside in other countries like Italy, Spain, England, you know, all over the world and uh, who marched with us, you know, I mean, they were in March, uh, they were Basically, they were marching in their cities every single night. Uh, meanwhile, we were marching here in Romania. I saw nice. pictures and videos from Vienna, you know, from London, from Rome, from uh, from Madrid, you know, from a lot of countries. Actually, I saw a guy, a Romanian guy, in, he was in India. You know, he was marching in <laughs> India, uh, which was pretty cool. And uh, the other thing was... Uh, we, also, uh, our neighbors supported us a lot. You know, uh, Moldavia, if you know the country, you know. Yes. Uh, basically, they, they supported us, you know, they marched for us. Basically, they are our brothers, you know, they are also Romanians, but they just are in a different country right now. And uh, also Bulgaria, you know, at south of Romania, they supported us. They organized a march on Sunday for us, you know, and it was very nice to see that everybody supports this uh, this march, you know, against corruption, because basically that's what it was actually, you know, a march against corruption. And it was very, uh, it was very interesting to see and very, let's say, uh, I know, I, I, I felt very, very well to see that everybody's supporting this, you know, and basically it's a common cause all around the world, you know, this, uh, it is. this fight against corruption. You know, and I think that people saw right now what what they saw in Romania. It was, uh, you know, a common goal that united the whole country uh, in this fight against corruption. And that this is something that can happen all around the world. And you can see an impact in it, you know, because after all, maybe we didn't won right now the law was retreated on Sunday, you know. That's the good news, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good news. Now we'll see what happens because probably they will uh, they will create a project law, submit it to the parliament to be approved. But basically, in this case, we we have absolutely nothing to do because uh, this is the 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 party which has uh, the majority in parliament, and uh, by it's it's their uh, it's their right to do this, you know. Right, and it's your right to go out into the streets and say, you know what, we don't think exactly. this is a good idea. Exactly, exactly. And uh, people are still going out in the streets right now because uh, they want, you know, people who are responsible from the government for for this terrible mistake to go away because uh, people don't trust them anymore. You know, right. and uh, the the honorable thing from their side would have been after they have retreated the law to resign themselves. But if they don't resign, people will st still go out in the streets, you know. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, right now, I think at uh, 12 o'clock, the Romanian hour will be a debate in the parliament. Oh, cool. Will be a debate in the parliament, yeah, related to, to what happened and the recent events. So, Soren, we're kind of coming to the end of our time together. I really want to thank you very much for, for sharing all of this. And I can't let us let you go without you talking a little bit about, you know, what it would be like for someone who comes to visit Romania and to, to put a plug in for your country. And, and uh, I know it's always great to have visitors come and see how other uh, people live in other countries. And so talk a little bit about Romania and what people could expect when they come, to, when they come and visit. Um, I've seen in the last year, you know, in 2016, I actually have seen more tourists in even in Bucharest, you know, than uh, more foreign uh, tourists than I, I've ever seen in my life, you know. So uh, anyway, there is a flood of foreign tourists coming in Romania right now. And I'm very glad about that, you know, because uh, actually it's a very... It's a very beautiful country. For example, I don't think I would live anywhere else. You know, I also like to to see different places, to to go and travel. But we have absolutely everything here. You know, you have like you have like mountains, you have sea. We have a lot of, of history, beautiful traditions. So you can expect uh, a lot of diversity. You know, I mean, if you come here, you can expect a lot of diversity. You have where to go, what to what to see, and what to travel, and a lot of history, a lot of history. So uh, also, I think people will love the food here. 
you know, food yeah, is absolutely right. here. Yeah, and uh, people are very, you know, are very happy, are very welcoming, you know, with uh, with uh, foreigners. So I think you'll love it here. You have to come. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Soren, you are uh, one of the main things, not one of the main things, one of the things that you do is you create online courses and you're on Skill, Skillshare, I think it is. Skillshare, yeah, and Udemy. So tell us a little bit about some of the courses that you put together and also if there's other work that you do that I'm not aware of because I want everyone to, to know a little bit more about you in terms of, of your professional work. Yes, well, I've, I've started in... Uh, online businesses or online marketing like about five years ago and uh, basically i started to create uh, online courses and these were actually the first type of digital products that i have started to create and sell uh, like about a year and a half ago and i think that was uh, the period when we actually uh, talked for the first time if i if i remember well and uh, it was uh, it was a great road for me i think the you know the online arena offers a lot of opportunities right now especially for for people uh, i know from it's something that you can access from anywhere in the world it gives you a lot of uh, of freedom and uh, besides the courses right now uh, i want actually i I've, I've developed a, a premium training that I want to launch with affiliates, you know, regarding how to create and sell online courses through platforms like Udemy and Skillshare. And I hope I will be I will do this in the in the spring. I've also became recently an Amazon seller, an Amazon FBA seller. Uh, it's a business that I am testing right now. I hope it will uh, it will go very well. And I've been involved in other in other types of businesses that I highly recommend to people, like affiliate marketing, which is a great a great model of business, especially if you want passive income. Uh, I also had an e-commerce store here in Romania. So the opportunities are, are very, very big in this arena, you know, but I'm very focused right now on the digital product side because uh, I think it's, it's the best of, uh, of them all. You know, you create a, a digital product. It's like an asset that you have. You don't need to, like in brick and mortar businesses, you know, you, know, you don't need to buy products, keep them, and uh, I don't know, maybe when they sell, they sell. When you have a digital product, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, fantastic because you can sell it on any platform that appears. Uh, you can create passive income from it. So it's a great way to, to make an online business. I, I really agree with you. Uh, the last, uh, last three weeks, I've been in Morocco. and um, I know. I saw the pictures. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And I have to say, you know, I went, they have these, they call them souks, which are just massive markets. And they're, it's overwhelming going into it because they've got piles of oranges and piles of apples and piles of carrots. And they have, I don't know how they do it. They take peas in the pod and they make this cone and it's four feet high and it just stands there. It's just like, it's pieces of art and then they've got spices and they're they are like little pyramids of, of different colored spices and then they've got all sorts of stuff in there and it's just absolutely amazing and um yeah i, I was in morocco too last year it was fascinating but the, the <laughs> point I, the point i wanted to make was these poor people had a massive amount of inventory and exactly yeah. all their money was tied up in this inventory and it didn't look like a lot of it was, I mean, the fruits and vegetables and everything was selling, but all the knickknacks and everything else were just, you could just see that was a ton of product. And that's the problem with that type of business model is getting turnover and tying up your money. And I really like the idea of the digital product where you, you've tied up your intellect, but you've got an infinite amount of intellect to tie up and it doesn't stop you from doing other things. Exactly. And you can start basically, you know, when you start to create a digital product, the investment is minimum, you know, from a financial standpoint. I mean, you can do it from scratch. You don't even need money. You can create an ebook or you can create an online course. If you have a laptop, a good microphone and you are a web developer or something like that, you can create a very good course that will sell very well. For example, on Udemy, okay, because they are very popular, you know. Yes. So there's a lot of possibilities in this uh, in this area. Great. So, Soren, if someone wanted to know more about you and what you're up to in more detail than just what we've given in the last couple of minutes, uh, how can they get a hold of you? 
Well, I think that the, the best way they can find more about me right now is to go to my Udemy profile. So, Perfect. Soren, thank you very much for sharing. Really appreciate you. Uh, your friendship and, and you, and I look forward to seeing you in a, in a couple months when I come to Romania. Okay, great. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see you to Scott, and I'm waiting for everybody. If you want to come here, I will gladly welcome you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. This is Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology for Impact Magazine. See you next time, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.